Hello, I'm Christine Chavon, and our show is Spiritual Exploration. Tonight, we're going to talk about using animal instincts to help people. And with me tonight is a most welcome guest who's been on my show on several occasions, Willow Earth, if you'll recall. And she is here tonight to tell us about how she uses her horses to help people that would not otherwise be able to be helped. Hello, Willow, and Hi. welcome to the show again. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How about yourself? Pretty good. Good, good. <laughs> now, we know that animals are very, very important in our lives. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, God wouldn't put them there. And there are animals that can help people. Very many animals are psychic, mm -hmm. and they are uh, very in tune with humans, and they mm -hmm. love humans. And you use mainly who your horses now to help people with the uh, animal instincts of these horses. Um, tell us about it. Well, basically, there, there's a magnetic field that surrounds the human body, as well as the earth. Um, doves are known to um, detect changes within it. Um, horses are known to move away from lightning before it actually strikes the ground. Wow. Um, so there's just different things that I learned from riding horses all my life that um, give me an idea when um, a change is taking place within a person. Like with autistic children, sometimes it's very hard for these children to express themselves. And bringing the horse into the picture awakens their voice, you know, just through what, what the horse shows me, um, certain behavior could tell me a lot about what that child has within. Really? Yeah. And how, how do the horses communicate this information to you? Well, to, just to give you an example, if somebody is, is really not making forward steps in their life and they're dealing with a horse, a horse will actually, um, they will keep walking backwards instead of going forward. And it, the people will classify it as stubborn but really it's not. And as soon as that person figures out like why, what is making them stop in their life, right? Mm -hmm. I have them visualize the positive outcome and then the horse will move forward. Really? Yeah, so I mean I could just tell by what the horse does. Like if a horse spins in circles, it could represent that a person is going in, in circles in their life. And as soon as they figure that out, that they're going in circles, that horse will stop doing that. So now, it's kind of amazing how, how they do it, you know. I'll bet. Well, tell me, how, now, you bring a person to the horse, right? Mm -hmm. and a horse, uh, out of 35 horses, one will actually choose a person to work with. Really? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if somebody wants, needs uh, an animal to help them with their life, their mm -hmm. path, whatever, uh, they'll go to the, 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 the 35 horses are all in one place? Yeah. Okay, and they're all, uh, and, and, and one horse that knows that they can help that person will walk over to the person. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And do you ever have more than one horse start saying, well, I can help too or something? Sometimes, but usually it is one that, that will make an effort to help a person. Really? Mm -hmm. And so there'll be one horse among the 35 that will mm -hmm. say, I know how to help this person. I can bring this person right. some kind of right. um, uh, relief or whatever. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So then, um, all right, so give us an example of, of a person who might come for help. Okay. Sometimes a person that comes to help with me are just people that maybe lost their path or just need some the understanding of why they're here, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of times um, I'll set things up around the ring we have at the ranch, and I'll put certain rock samples, and I'll put tree samples, animal samples, and I'll have them on the horse as I lead them around, around the ring, around the medicines. And what I will do is I will detect any changes that the horse might go through. Like for instance, if we go near an amethyst rock and the horse starts to snort or starts to maybe pull the ground, I know that they're being infected by that. So I will tell them how to make a medicine using that rock. Um, if it's an animal, let's say that they maybe walk past um, the sample of like um, cougar hair that I have and they respond to that. That tells me that the person needs to bring in more of the, the cougar lessons. Um, just different things. I actually use real samples of things with my horses. Um, real rocks, real tree samples, just to get an idea of, um, and then, you know, a person's magnetic field connects with 
the rocks energy field, and that's what creates a pool, and um, that's what I look for. Mm -hmm. So then the person comes to you, mm -hmm. and the person gets on the horse mm -hmm. and rides past all these samples. Mm -hmm. Right. And if mm -hmm. the horse stops at a certain sample that you've set up, could it, it could be mm -hmm. cougar hair, bear hair, certain kinds of rocks, or bark from it, trees. Right. It tells me it affected the person enough to stop that horse. I see. Mm -hmm. So and then, all right, so it stops uh, by a certain sample, and that sample tells you what the person needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend to a person? Let's say you, you mentioned cougar hair. So let's say the horse is going along, mm -hmm. stops at the cougar hair, and you say, okay, the mm -hmm. horse stopped over here at the cougar hair. This means that you have to be patient, wait things out. Um, you would almost have to be a little bit mysterious with things. Um, if they would stop at wolf, for instance, it would represent a teaching coming or they need to maybe continue education in their life, depending on what animal it is, can mean a whole different, different things. And depending on um, the animal and the rock they choose also can change the whole thing too. So it's kind of, you can't really explain it. It's almost like an insight that I get from the horses that kind of show me through, you know, certain things. So in other words, uh, in some ways you can read the horses. Well, I um, spent my 39 years on the back of a horse. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I better have a good idea of what, you know, what they do. Um, yeah. Horses will sense danger. They will just uh, um, at different weather patterns. Um, a lot of times if you're emotional, you shouldn't even get near a horse because they will pick it up. If you ever hear the thing that if you're fearful mm. that they will pick it up, oh, absolutely they do. And they'll mess with you. <laughs> Believe me, I know. Well, how will they mess with you? If they know you're scared, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, that shows them that, oh my God, there's a monster in the woods. So they, they get scared because if you're scared, then there must then be something think, to be afraid yeah, because of. Because they're herd oriented. Ah. Okay, so when one horse is affected, the whole group is. Mm. So when you have a person that's part of that group, they become also, you know, uh, sensitive to things like that. Well, many years ago, I mean, I haven't had much experience with horses, but I do love them. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, I was at a dude ranch, well, it's gotta be over 20 years ago, and um, we had ridden the horses, mm -hmm. and then we came back to uh, where the horses were kept by the stable and everything, and I'm just standing there, and this one horse, this the horse, I think it was the horse that I was riding, mm -hmm. walked over to me and started right behind me with its nose in nudged me, mm -hmm. you know, actually pushed me, I mean, I lifted me off my feet. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and I said, wow, what's that for? And the fellow who was tending the horses said, when a horse likes you, they do that. Okay. It also probably represented something in yourself that you need to move forward with. Really? And because you couldn't express it, the horse's way would be to express that for you. Telling me I had to move forward with Absolutely. something. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know if I moved forward with it. It was at least 20, 25 <laughs> years ago, so. <laughs> but, um, all right, so now you, you were saying earlier that you worked uh, with the horses with autistic children. Mm -hmm. How do the horses help the autistic children? Oh, it, it's amazing. Um, that not only autistic children, but kids with leukemia and cancer. Um, it, it's just, these horses, I have one horse that will, that went up to a little girl that had leukemia, God love her, and he actually walked up to her, took his whole neck, put it around her and hugged her. With his, it was awesome. And anyway, apparently she kept on saying that she would never heard about a unicorn. And my one horse, um, who's Andalusian Mustang, he's pure white, and she never heard of a Mustang, but yet she said to her dad, I saw, I, I mean, I saw the unicorn in my dream. And she didn't even know what a unicorn was. Wow. Yeah, so um, when they'd all do different things. Like Wendy um, really loves children. You know, my one Andalusian and my Pasifina just love children. And um, it's amazing the way these horses look in a person's soul. It, it's, I can't describe it. It's, it, it's like the, they're the words for the people. Yeah. You know, same way with the doves I use, um, the very same thing. So then these children come away feeling better, yeah, feeling happy. Do. Yeah, because the one little girl that had leukemia, 
didn't smile for like six months. Really? Until not at she all? came to my clinic and she could not stop smiling. And it was it was funny because she just like ran up to the horses and like Wendy just turned around, looked at her with these big brown eyes, walked over to her and just put his head like right on the shoulder. This is like a wild horse mm. that I can only get near. Mm -hmm. That I don't, uh, you know, and here he goes up to her like, it was, it was just, it was beautiful. So then you have people that call you up and tell you, I have a sick child or. Or I have problems. I'm having and problems. And I need, I need assistance, yes. And then I just use the instincts of an animal to help a person face what they need to face. And so by the, horse's actions, mm -hmm. you are able to tell the person, well, the horse did that because. Right, right. Um, see, there's, there's different ways that horses will communicate. Um, they have all kinds of different whinnies. You know, um, they have different pawing that they do. I mean, all kinds of things, snorting, and it's just. And you understand all these different things because you've been with them all your life. I've been with them all my life. So, I mean, I basically was raised with horses. They were my teachers. Um, I don't remember really a time when I feel like I was born on the back of a horse. You know, I just... <laughs> you have to ask your mother about that, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, really, I... Like, a lot of times, I'll go out in the woods and I'll ride my horse. And I never, I never really um, use a saddle or a bridle. Wow. And usually, you know, I'll, I'll just go and let the horse go where he wants to go. And I will say, okay, um, illusion, lead me to trees or plants or rocks that are going to be good for me. And I'll just kind of hold on to him and he'll just like take me into the forest. And it's so beautiful, like the animals that come up and it, it's my sense of freedom. It's oh, the, sure. It's the most beautiful thing in, in the world. And I love to have people experience that too. Yeah. So then when somebody comes to you and they have problems, you take them on a horse into the yeah. woods and go in, and they will, mm -hmm. they will try to find uh, whatever in the woods is going to help that yeah, person. Yeah, for instance, like a horse might stop at a certain tree, okay? Uh -huh. And then what I will do is I will have them write down to, to that tree, and then I have references about certain trees and what they mean. And then what I'll do is I'll have a person actually um, see if they could put that in to helping them with their, with their life. And I might make them, have them make a necklace out of a piece of bark, okay? For instance, certain trees, okay, trees have the instinct of finding water. And the roots of a tree will search until it finds water. Mm -hmm. For hundreds of years, people use trees for dowsing, okay? Their instinct is also to grow where they will actually meet the sun, you know? Um, when there's a tree that really affects a person's magnetic field and the horse detects it, I'll have them take the stick, make a necklace out of it, and what will happen is that stick around their neck will guide them to things that affect their own water within their own body. A tree's instinct will pick up water movement. So if there's a decision, a person, a place that moves your blood or moves your water, um, that stick will lead you to that source. It'll lead you to the sources that affect you. So in other words, if you're in need of a certain person in your life for whatever reason for help or love or a job or whatever you need, right. that stick will lead you to the right source. Right, because it has an instinct of detecting water changes within you and what affects you. Right. And so it will be able to, um, how could you put it, put, uh, put out for the person that, that you need to bring that person into your life in whatever capacity is needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to know that, because you were telling me before about the same thing, uh, getting a piece of bark and making mm -hmm. a necklace, et cetera, and then, then you were telling me to drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And water, uh, the water in the body is what is what, and according to what you're uh, wearing and putting out for, well, the water in your body is what will attract. Uh, as you said, it's, um, it's sort of like an electrical conductor of some sort. Right, right. Like doves will detect storms before they occur by cooing and things like that. Um, horses will detect a storm coming by, you know, hurtling in like a little corner, you know. Um, it just, they're, they're just very in tune to that. Yeah, the same know. thing with the dogs. Like, um, oh, absolutely. There's a little dog yeah. at home, and mm -hmm. if there's thunder out there or something, uh, he'll know about it before, before, before we do. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you know, and, yeah. and he'll start shaking and all mm -hmm. that because of the thunder. Uh -huh. All right, we know that thunder is not going to hurt us, mm -hmm. but uh, an animal usually doesn't, uh, they, they, they're not sure where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so they don't know. So they will cower and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know. You brought this book with you called Cassidy's Rescue. Mm -hmm. Now, this book here is is a tell me about it. It's a children's book, it's correct? It's a children's book, okay, for children, and it's about um, how I use my horses to help to help children, and it's about a little girl that really loved horses all her life, and she had a dream about these. Um, three beautiful horses, and what happened? It turned out that it it turned into more than just a dream. And here she was able to get in, in touch with the rescue, and to be able to help these horses. And and the horses actually talk in this book. It's it's just such a cute story. So Cassidy's rescue means that this little girl named Cassidy is rescuing uh -huh. horses. Well, they're actually rescuing her. I see. <laughs> but her intention was to rescue them. Right, and right. They, and they turned around, yes. And they turned, and, and I would like everyone to see your horses. Your horses that you use mm -hmm. to do your mm -hmm. uh, work mm -hmm. in helping people. Right, and all three of those horses were abused. And you rescued them. Yeah. Okay, so tell us who are the horses, they're on camera okay. now. The, the pure white one, he's my Mustang, and also part, well, Spanish Mustang and Illusion. Um, when I first got him, he was scared to death of people. It, it was horrible. You couldn't get near him. You couldn't touch him, nothing. Mm -hmm. And what happened was I took a, a good year with him, teaching him to trust again. So whenever I do a clinic with him, he is now able to teach people that have been in abusive relationships, people that have been very hurt in their life, to open up and trust again. Hmm. Um, my other one is a Pasifina, which is the gray and black. He's a pure um, Puerto Rican horse from Puerto Rico. And, um, he's from Puerto he's, Rico? Well, they're Puerto Rican horses. Really? Yeah. Um, they're actually connected with the Jettas and also the Andalusians. Now, it's the one are, in the middle here that you were just talking about, right? Yeah, and this, this here is Illusion. Over here. Yeah, and Illusion is just incredibly, Pasifinas are incredibly smart, more sensitive than most horses. Um, they just seem to have a more of an inner scent. A lot of times they're used for children, autistic children, things like that. Um, what's amazing about him is he wasn't able to make any decisions in his life. He was put in a stall. He was, his grandfather's a famous horse. Who? Um, his father is Profeta. Oh, yeah? Desilu. Really? So he's in the Pasifina World magazine. And so he was bred to show and everything. And he couldn't make any of his decisions for himself until he came to me. Mm -hmm. The story of how I got that horse is amazing. It, really? it was, yeah. And, so now his job is to help people make decisions. Wow. So they all have something that they do, yeah. Okay, and what about yeah. this guy over here? The, uh... That's Stormy, that's my little boy. Stormy, right <laughs> he, he's He got a lot of issues. Um, Stormy cribs, and he likes to crib on wood, and they actually get high from it. What's crib They meaning? go, <gasps> and they, they, breathe, they grab the wood, and they chew it, and they suck in air. And they actually get high from it. They're, they get addicted to it. Wood? And Yes. Okay. It, it's called a criver. And it, it's like a stimulant form. So he's the one that I use for people that have addiction problems. Oh, really? He could be really out there. He could be really out there because he shows them how stupid they look. Well, because they're yeah. on drugs, yeah. you mean? Yeah. I see. So all the horses that I work with, all have certain, you know, certain things that they have that represent Gifts that people. they have that they can pass along right. to people, that they can right. help people with. Right, like if a horse is abused and it comes to me, I'll rescue it, I'll help it, and then it will, it, I always ask a horse, do you want to work with me with people? I never force a horse to do that. Right. It's up to them, and a lot of these horses just love doing that. It's, you, you could see it that they, radiate when, when they're actually doing this work. It's amazing. Oh, well, you know, I imagine 
that like people, animals can get a certain amount of satisfaction out of uh, doing something good. Yeah. Because I mean, I know that when I have helped a situation and made something better for either a person or an animal, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I do get involved with, with, with different things, and I know that at the end of that situation, especially where there's a really happy ending, mm -hmm. that um, I feel so good. I get this adrenaline rush. Mm -hmm. It's almost, it is like being high, I guess you might mm -hmm. say, and it's very hard to come down from, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, yeah, I, I, I can see the horse feeling good. I just helped somebody. I just mm -hmm. showed somebody something. I just helped them to mm -hmm. make their life a little bit better. And mm -hmm. the horse would probably feel very, very good about they that. They do. I mean, it, it's, it's, they, they know. It, it's the weirdest thing they know. Um, they know if a child is hurting. They know if, a, if, if an adult is hurting. And just to see these horses work, and, and it's just, it's amazing. I, I can't even describe it. It's just okay. an awesome I have to come, I have to come, come over there sometime yeah. and watch this. You'll love it. I really, I'm sure I will. Mm -hmm. Well, is this what you do on a daily basis now? Yes, I'm actually doing... Well, I do the clinics. I have a lot of speaking engagements I do. Um, I also do um, regular parties for people as well with using dubs. Right. So I'm a pretty busy person. Oh, I'm sure you are. <laughs> I don't get much time for myself, that's for sure. Yeah, well, you, so. well you're going to have to take some time for yourself. I can't. But you have I got 35 to horses to feed. You I have 35 <laughs> that you take I got 52 of? acres of land. There's, right. there's no time. 35 horses. Mm -hmm. And okay. you know each one's name and everything. Yes. That's like having a, a class full of students, and you'll mm -hmm. know each one's name. Mm -hmm. You know? And do they know, all know their names? No. <laughs> <laughs> they know the word hay, carrots. Um, sugar? You know, <laughs> sugar, saddle, run the other way, you know? Uh, things like that. Yeah. 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 They're so spoiled. you have, like, like, I guess, barns full of horses then? Yeah. Wow, and these are all rescuees or what? No, um, we also have a boarding stable that we do. Oh. And we have trail rides that we give um, people. You know, they go out and Saddle up and uh, go mm -hmm. on a trail ride. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, good. That's nice. That, that's really great. And what part of Pennsylvania are you in? I'm in actually the Reading area. Reading. Mm -hmm. Reading, which is near Lancaster, you said, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's about two hours from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where I have the farm. and. You know, um, that's why I work with the horses. Usually when a person comes to me, um, I'll decide, you know, what they want to work with. If it's a horse, if it's a dove, if it's both, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes at you, let's say they, they come to you and they say, oh, I, I've been depressed. My mm -hmm. life hasn't been going so well. Um, you know, I'm alone in the world and I'm mm -hmm. depressed and I would like to get myself out of this funk. I would say then get yourself out of that funk. Okay, but how would the horses help? <laughs> the horses would probably do the same thing. Um, they will make sure that that person doesn't find a reason to be miserable. Um, horses have a way of tapping in to what is wrong with the person and then reflecting it mm -hmm. back to them. Mm. Um, and so th what happens is the person is so in tune to watching the horses. Yeah. And actually, it's the horses are mirroring them. Mm -hmm. See, like I might have a, um, a person or a client take out a picture of somebody and I might have them look at the picture and then I will observe the horse to see what the horse does. If the horse backs away, if the horse snorts, if the horse runs the other way, all these things could tell me about that relationship. Or I might have two people up, a man and a woman, and whatever problem that they're dealing with that might not be noticed by them, mm. the horse will show me, okay, what is going on with that, with those, with that people, with those people. Even if they're not aware of it. Uh -huh. yeah. And then you'll say to them, well, your problem is blah, blah, blah. Right, well, because animals, you have to realize that when they were out in the herd and stuff, they had to rely on their instincts to survive. Yeah. They had to be able to pick up on um, Where's the food, where's the water. Yeah, so it's their natural ability to detect these things in human beings as, as well as the earth. Hmm. I think it's very interesting that um, you discovered this mm -hmm. because the thought just occurred to me that 
God put us here on this earth. He put us humans and he put animals on the earth with us. Mm -hmm. And the animals are on the earth to help us. Right. And yet people have the, the nerve, the audacity to take God's creatures and abuse them, oh, yeah. not realizing that if they only allowed the animal to help them, they could live much better, happier lives. Oh, I know, I know. And, and, and what purpose is in it, I have no idea. Now, you were saying before how you go to rescue horses at mm -hmm. what they call the horse... The horse auctions. Horse yeah. au auctions, mm -hmm. and you, you've picked up some abused horses. Yeah. Now, these horses that you've taken back with you and stuff, and now they're working with you to help people. Yeah. Because I, I gave them people that chance. abused yeah. them. Yeah. You so know? They're, now they're here to help people that are abused. Well, then that tells me one thing. It says that animals have... have uh, the, the same love that God gives us. Absolutely. I mean, I see the love in a mare's eyes when she gives birth to her foal. Ah. And I see love when I'm out in that field with all those 35 horses, the love and the family unit that is part of all that is just, it's truly amazing. The bond, I mean, you know, it just, it's amazing. You know, they will die for each other. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. I hope they don't have to, but yeah. it's, it's nice to know that, that they, they, so in other words, the horses, they kind of communicate with each other then, maybe even help oh, each absolutely. other. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, horses can also somewhat be very moody at times, too. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, they, they get in their moods. They have their different personalities. Oh, sure. And, um, you know, you just kind of get, I mean, I'm, I'm so used to horses, I could tell what moods they're in. and. Um, they're very jealous too. Of each other? Oh yeah, when it comes to like a person that, like, like my three horses, yeah. oh my gosh, it's like, they're like always trying to get my attention, so. Really? Very jealous. I heard something terrible that, that, that really bothers me that um, they do something to horses in China and they have horse fights like we have horse, like we have dog fights here. And, and, and that bothers me, that, that, that's very, I, what is it that people have to do these things? I don't know. There's no, there's no answer. There is no answer. There's no that. answer why, why anybody would want to get involved in something like that when there's so many other things in the world you can do to make money, and that's what it all boils down to. I know. What it all boils down to is profit. I know. And there's so many wonderful, uh, sinless things, because I think it's a sin. To really to, to harm to harm anybody actually a child an animal uh, uh, an elderly person uh, mm -hmm. a spouse whatever I think is terrible and uh, but now we're talking about animals and that is just as terrible mm -hmm. and I don't know <clears throat> why people pick that kind of thing to make their living when they could be doing something so much better and so much more spiritual mm -hmm. you know uh, you can make just as money as much money taking horses and saying okay. Uh, so much money a ride, and uh, and we'll saddle up, and we'll go for a ride through the woods, and they can make lots of money doing that. Why do they have to, uh, you know? Yeah, I know. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Just pray. Mm -hmm. Just pray. All right. Well, tell us some more about how your horses and other animals are helping people. We went. As a matter of fact, you have um, in the book here a picture of you that I would like to show. And what was this about now? You have this, this that was picture me of you. doing this show. Um, that's I have to some get of the real birds. close with this one. Yeah. That's some of the birds that I use.